Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a lesson that my instructional coach actually made because I really like hers. And then I'll walk you through my draft. Um, so first and foremost, I've got some reminders. Um, my office hours are every day from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., so that's when you can contact me. Um, but you can always contact me anytime, and I'll reply to you as fast as I can via Remind. It's learning and email, always. Um, if you need any help, please reach out to me. I'm happy to give you more support um, in anything at all. I'm happy to find you a book. I'm happy to help you with your paper, anything. I'm bored. Give me things to do. Um, so our learning goal for this lesson is I can use the writing process to draft, edit, and revise my working draft. So we're taking the draft that you guys wrote and we're prettying it up. So this week should be pretty easy. Um, so you're writing an authentic piece. You're going to share a message with a specific audience. Um, you'll share a topic and medium, draft, revise, edit, and publish. This piece could be an essay, a letter, a diary entry, a blog post, a vlog post, a proposal, etc. This will be due um, on Monday, 4-13. It should be approximately one page or 300 words. Include a minimum of two to three specifically selected craft moves to create an effect and highlight the craft moves you use in your final copy. And I'll post this on It's Learning For You as well to look back on. This is your grading criteria. So you've got a clear message. You use craft moves. It's organized. You've got a specific audience and you write to them well and you use correct spelling, grammar, punctuation, capitalization. So um, continue working on your draft. Write until you have approximately one page that you're ready to revise and edit, and when you finish writing, go ahead and move on. Um, so revising and editing. Remember what we've learned about these things. When we're revising, we're starting with those macro edits. We're adding in sentences and words. We're removing unnecessary words and sentences. We're moving things around. We're substituting words and sentences for others. When we're done revising, we'll move into editing. And that's when we fix capitalization, um, usage issues, punctuation, grammar, things like that. Small edits. So this week we'll revise and edit our pieces and get them ready for publication. So um, this is my friend's draft. So we're gonna, I'm going to read it to you. And then I'll show you mine. So, dear diary, I have been incredibly unproductive, and I feel guilty. After days and days of tedium, something had to give. I had watched approximately 16 hours of TV in one day. I know deep in my soul that if I watched one more second of Netflix, I would implode. Listen, I'm grateful for Netflix. I am. I couldn't imagine going through this period of social isolation without it, but there's only so many episodes a girl can binge before she loses her ever-loving mind. I received the real wake-up call the sixth Time, the Netflix bot casually questioned whether I was still watching. That question included judgment, and I, all, and I felt it all the way to my toes. So I decided it was time to discover a new skill. After scouring Pinterest for an hour, I know, only one standard deviation better than Netflix, I determined that I had the resources and potentially the skill to recover an ottoman. My husband and I had purchased our ottoman shortly after we were married. We hadn't quite nailed our style yet. We ordered it from a showroom and requested special fabric that we couldn't see ahead of time. When it arrived, I was horrified. It was nightmarish, a disturbing, furry, dark brown and black, zebra print monstrosity that I suspect was supposed to look like a real animal. Rest assured, it did not. I have hated it since day one, and I've wanted to fix it for over five years. Rather than begin another mindless TV or TikTok binge, I decided to utilize my extended spring break as an opportunity to dive into a project. After an hour or so of research, I got to work. I measured my fabric, I cut, I trimmed, and I stapled like the Dickens. Normally, I would rush through this project because I had 374 other things swirling around in my mind. Today, I had the opportunity to commit fully and completely to this project. I worked in peace while the sounds of Pandora's instrumental pop lulled me into a deeper state of relaxation than I've known in months. It took me a couple of hours to complete the project, but I found that those hours were completely satisfying because I was able to engage my mind in a way I haven't in a long time. I felt amazing. I felt alive. So that diary is how I'm going to look at social isolation moving forward as an opportunity to do the things that I have never had the chance to do. The moment I created something beautiful, well, that's probably generous. I stopped feeling so trapped and started feeling a little bit more like myself. Truth be told, I started feeling more like myself than I have in a while. It was therapeutic. 
Perhaps this brief moment of isolation is more than just a jail sentence. Perhaps it is an opportunity to explore sides of myself that often get neglected. I know that there are a lot of things that I claim I will do when I get the chance. This chance finally seems to be staring me in the face. So until things return to normal, I will relish the surprising gifts that isolation and boredom offer. I will create. Um, so her message. She picked these lines specifically that capture her message. So she wants her audience to understand that it is important to capitalize on this experience and take a chance to do something new. And she uses the sentence, perhaps this brief moment of isolation is more than just a jail sentence. Perhaps it's an opportunity to explore sides of myself that often get neglected. And I think that does absolutely capture her message. But then she says, I wonder if my message could be clearer if I combined these two sentences. So she's trying to be more concise. So she stuck those two sentences together and noticed she didn't need any commas. She just made it into um, a compound sentence with the... Um, a compound sentence with the two um, clauses stuck together. So she says, I initially used the word perhaps because it is thoughtful, but I wonder if it is a little wishy-washy. I'm going to rewrite this to make my position stronger. So she changes it to this brief period of required social isolation is more than merely a jail sentence. And then we've got a semicolon. Rather, comma, it is an opportunity to dive into new creative ventures. And that does sound better and it's more concise. And she's right. It's less wishy-washy. So go back into your writing, identify your message, and try to spend a couple minutes improving upon it. Make it clearer. So organization. So she organized her ideas in order, and she thinks that works for the most part, but there's a few really big blocks of text, and that's not exactly friendly for readers. So in order to make it easier to understand and more convincing, she's going to shorten a few of these blocks and add some single-sentence paragraphs to emphasize some key points. So she emphasizes this key point, which is good because it transitions into what she's going to do next. Let's see, she separated this. She made her message a single sentence paragraph, which is good because she really wants to emphasize it. And then this last sentence, which is impactful and emotional. She made that a single sentence paragraph. I like that. So now go back into your own draft and notice how you've organized things. Where can you make changes? Where can you break up paragraphs? Where can you add single sentence paragraphs and make those changes now? So once you've done that, we're gonna look at craft moves. Um, she used a lot of parentheses to enclose extra information to share with her readers. Um, it's a move she uses a lot as a writer because she likes to create a conversational tone. She also uses dashes, which I do too, and then emphasize keywords by italicizing them. Um, so she wants to use some more figurative language. So she's going to practice including a simile and personification. Ooh, excuse me. So she's going to add a simile here to help her reader understand exactly how lazy she had been. So I felt as lazy as the spoiled daughter of a 96-year-old billionaire. So that certainly is dramatic and makes it sound like she was lazy. Um, and then she put some personification down here. So the Netflix bot casually questioned. I like that. So the bot is questioning, but it necessarily like, like, can't do that because it's a bot. Good. Easy simile, easy personification. I love that. So now go back into your draft and include some of your own craft moves to engage your audience. Um, find a friend or a family member to help edit your piece, or you can use Grammarly. Um, Grammarly is great. Tell your editor to help correct any mistakes and make recommendations about where you could use stronger or more precise words. Um, go back into its learning and look at the notes your peer editors left for you. I'm going to, when you submit, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. When you submit your draft, I'm going to have you guys um, peer edit so that you might have to wait on that um, and then make any necessary changes. So go back into your draft and try to get it ready for publication. Fix any errors. Um, check your word choice. Could you be more specific? She chose words like nightmarish and monstrosity to add more voice and description. Think about places you can upgrade that diction. If you need help, remember I'm happy to work with you as a writing partner and you can contact me anytime. So now I want to show you guys my piece. Um, so I wrote to you guys because that's just like what I know how to do. Um, so I'll read it to you first and then I'll show you the changes that I made. So, dearest students, quarantine has been difficult. Some days I relish in the lack of responsibility. I definitely did it first. Other days I feel an inescapable longing for the mundane. I'd give anything to wake up before the sun rises and drive to school. 
I crave your silly stories, your jokes, your honesty, your curiosity, your individuality, and the list could go on for pages. It is an endless itch to move through crowded hallways and smile at familiar faces. Shakespeare wrote King Lear while he was in quarantine. I have written exactly nothing. I've read nothing. I don't take my medicine on a regular schedule. I don't eat at normal times. The day is divided by coffee hours and macaroni and cheese hours. I can't watch the tire documentary again, but can't find any inspiration to pick up my guitar, a paintbrush, or a pen. I feel like I've lost my spark. Honestly, this experience has forced me to realize that all of the things in my life that provide me with raw energy, happiness, excitement, and passion, human interaction reigns supreme. I've never wanted to hug another person so badly in my life. In the darkest moments, I'm angry with myself. Angry for my selfish pity party while my father drives an ambulance through downtown Houston with gloves on his hand. I'm angry for my friends working the front lines as emergency room nurses. I'm angry for the old folks that rush past me in the grocery stores adjusting their homemade masks on their faces. For my service industry friends applying for unemployment. For my high school principal in the intensive care unit. I'm angry every time I read about another person withering away with no one to hold their hand. When I'm not angry, I worry. I worry about everyone, but most of all, I worry about you. I worry that you're scared, bored, lonely, and anxious. I worry that you have too much on your shoulders. I worry that you don't have what you need. I worry that you're dealing with experiences you shouldn't have to. It's hard to take online schooling seriously when all I really want to do is give you a big hug and listen. Man, do I miss listening to you. I miss hearing your uniqueness, your grit, your nerve, your kindness. I even miss you throwing paper airplanes into my ceiling. I miss telling you to get off of your phones. I miss yelling, read a book, good morning little angels, and the occasional but loving shut up. I know that we are supposed to go on, and so I will. I will go on missing you, loving you, and worrying about you, but I'll also persist teaching you. I know it won't be easy to learn sometimes, but we will hang in there, as we always have. More than anything, I want you to know that I am in your corner, and maybe six feet away or through a computer screen, but I have not stopped rooting for you. I won't ever stop rooting for you. I know it doesn't feel the same, but I'm here, always. Love, Miss S. So, let's see some changes that I made. Um, I changed quarantine has been difficult to quarantine has been a roller coaster to add some craft moves um i upgraded some words here so lack of obligation instead of responsibility um inexorable instead of inescapable um mundane instead of um i think i said normal life i don't remember um ridiculous stories instead of silly stories um i took out all of the things in my life and changed it to everything to make it a little bit shorter I upgraded some words here, um, joy, enthusiasm, and zeal, and I added a dash to make the human interaction reign supreme, like stick out a little bit more. Um, I added a simile here. As an extrovert, I find myself pacing back and forth like a Mustang with too little pasture because I really want to emphasize like how difficult it is. (laughs) Um, I upgraded angry here to bleakest or darkest. I think I upgraded to bleakest, yeah. And then angry, I upgraded to fuming. Um, I upgraded Outraged, too. I forgot to highlight it. Um, I changed It's Hard to Take Online Schooling Seriously to It's Hard to Write Lessons About Similes and Metaphors, because I think that's more conversational and inviting. Um, I used the word persist here, so I swapped it out here and here, because I think it's a better word. And then I changed this to a dash here to make it stick out a little bit more. So I just made some little bitty changes. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. I miss you guys. Please let me know if there's anything else that I can do to help you. Um, I love you as always and get to work.